الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنا نحن نزلنا الذكر وإنا له لحافظون ولقد أرسلنا من قبلك في شيع الأولين وما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون كذلك نسلكه في قلوب المجرمين لا يؤمنون به وقد خلت سنة الأولين ولو فتحنا عليهم بابا من السماء فظلوا فيه عرجون لقالوا إنما سكرت أبصارنا بل نحن قوم مسحورون صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Inna nahnu nazzalna al-dhikra wa inna lahu la hafidhun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that we ourselves have sent down the dhikr and we are there to protect it Here one thing should be noted is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not said the word Inna nahnu nazzalna hadha al-Qur'an that we sent down this Qur'an or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that this is the kalam and did not talk about the kalam only the words only that we are protecting so therefore as was said last night as well the meaning of the Quran is also under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore under the tafsir of this ayah ulama have written and it is an agreement and consensus of the ulama of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah that whoever believes that the hadith was not protected which is the sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if they say that Hadith is not pre well preserved and Hadith is not protected, then they cannot be also called a Muslim because they are going against a clear meaning of the Ayah of the Quran. And those people who do not believe in the Quran or negate the Quran or the command of Allah or the message of, message of Allah, they are not Muslims. So therefore those people who say that we absolutely do not believe in Hadith outright because we do not know if it was well preserved or protected or not, they are saying, Na'uzu Billah, they are accusing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, although he claimed that he is going to protect the zikr, which is the words of the Quran and the understanding of the Quran, he did not protect it, Na'uzu Billah. So therefore, hadith, we have to believe, this is part of our belief, that the sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was well preserved. Although, about specific ahadith, there might be a questionable track record of the people who copied it, and that's a different thing but to outright say that Nauzu Billah there is no station of hadith in deen and because hadith was not well preserved in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam although first of all to begin with this notion is wrong that hadith was not preserved in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there was Sahaba who was writing down and preserving the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and just like the Quran the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also interested the Sahaba with the hadith as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a special kind of people to be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Very honest people. Those people who have got their certification from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran itself. A pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is continuing pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has become happy with the mu'mineen. And they are happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a continuing pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the continuing pleasure means that they did not do anything that would take away the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from them. Even if they might have committed some mistakes of ijtihad in their judgment, if they even may if they may have committed mistakes because they were human beings and free of mistakes are only Ambiya and the angels but even if the sahaba had made some mistake or error of judgment Allah is still is pleased with them and it is not possible that Billah, somebody did tahrif somebody transformed and changed the hadith and the words of the Prophet and Allah will say in the Quran that we are happy with them that's not possible so therefore hadith meaning of meanings of deen understanding of deen practice of deen the words of the Quran the meanings of the Quran all of those were very securely, very dutifully and correctly, accurately preserved by the Sahaba and then taught onwards to, the, to their students and to their students and to their students and therefore such, through such people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected the words of the Quran, the meanings of the Quran, the hadith, 
the sunnah, the practice of deen, all of those things. And this is the place where we should go to learn deen as well. <clears throat> the other thing that is mentioned in the tafsir of this ayah is that when Allah has said that this Quran is protected, we have to understand what is the Quran. The Quran is the exact word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as given to Jibreel by Allah himself and as recited to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Jibreel and in that order that order which was told to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Jibreel alayhi salam and according to which order it was compiled which is the current order of the Quran so if somebody starts writing the, writing the very verses of the Quran and does not add anything from outside but only changes the order according to what feels more appropriate to them it will not be called the Quran Similarly, if somebody takes only the translation of the Quran, writes or prints English translation of the Quran or Urdu translation or any translation of the Quran in any other language, Quran is only in Arabic. The words of the Quran have come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These words are the Quran. No other words can be called Quran. So if somebody publishes English or Urdu translations and calls them a they, they say that this is the Quran or publish them under the name of Quran, they are criminals. They are doing tahrif, they are trying to transform the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah has not called Urdu the Quran. Allah has not called English the Quran. The Quran is in Arabic, in the Arabic language and in this order that has been told to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa by Jibreel. In this order, these words, the way they have been given, that is Quran and only that can be called Quran. Continuing on, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ فِي شِيعِ الْأَوَّلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we did send the messengers before you among the groups of early people. So this word Shia is the plural of Shia. And Shia means group, collection of people. Also, it may be a physical collection of people or it may be a group of people who are together in some sort of belief. So, it is a horde of people, group of people. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ فِي شِيَعِ الْأَوَّلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that we sent messengers before you among these earlier groups. وَمَا يَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَعْزِئُونَ No messenger came to them but they used to mock at him. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not, not, not the only one or the first one. It is a consolation with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that all the anbiya who were great people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they went through this. كَذَلِكَ نَسْلُهُ نَسْلُكُهُ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being among the criminals and the sinners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this is how we make it, make it enter. The disbelief, this is how it enters in the hearts of mujrimin, in the hearts of criminals. Two very important things that should be paid attention here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying because of their sins, because of their crimes, Allah makes the kufr enter into their hearts. So kufr is something that a person has with their heart and therefore our hearts are very important. Our hearts are very important. Belief, taqwa, fear of Allah, love of Allah, those are connected and directly the sight of those, the station of those are our hearts. Therefore we need to protect our hearts and work on our hearts very, 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 uh, you know, give it a lot of importance that we preserve, protect our hearts and work on their improvement. And sins destroy the heart. Sins destroy the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, كَذَلِكَ نَسْلُكُهُ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ Because of their crimes, their biggest crime was jealousy and arrogance. That they were arrogant and they were jealous. They were saying that how could a Nabi come from among the Banu Ismail? And some of them were saying, how could, why, why did Na'uzubillah, did Allah find no one else to send as a Nabi? Or, why did Allah not send angels to us? All of these things are based on their arrogance. Because of this sin, Allah made kufr enter into their hearts. So, the, so their heart, hearts became receptive to kufr. Therefore, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. I say it again and again that every single sin, every single sin has the inherent capacity, it has the potential that if we do not pay attention towards it, if we, if we do a sin and do not erase it by repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by being ashamed on it, it has the inherent potential to take us closer and closer and closer to disbelief. And every single good deed, it has a direct effect again just like a sin on our heart. 
and every single good deed it has the inherent potential to take us closer and closer and closer to jannah no sin is a small no good deed is a small everything has a lot of value la yu'minuna bihi wa qad khalat sunnatul awwalin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that these people in his in whose hearts kufr has entered because of their sins they are not going to they they are not going to believe in it the quran and this has been the way of earlier people walaw fatahna alayhim baban min as-sama'i fadallu fihi yarujun they are asking that angels should be sent down upon them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that they are so hard and so firm in their disbelief and they are not going to believe this if you even give them angels they will ask for something else because they don't want to believe so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying rather than sending down angels if we opened up the doors of the sky on these people and made them travel through the skies as they will be traveling they will say laqalu inna ma sukkirat absaruna bal nahnu qaum mashhurun they will even if we open a gate in the sky they will keep and they keep ascending through it still they will say what in fact our eyes have been deluded nauzubillah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has cast a charm on us and our eyes have been enchanted we are bal nahnu qaum mashhurun we are, have been enchanted we are a people that has nauzubillah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has somehow uh, caused a delusion over our eyes and we have been enchanted this is not true nauzubillah so even if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that they will not believe so therefore there is no point in listening to their uh, demands they are only presenting those demands because they simply don't want to believe may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from becoming the criminals may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from becoming the, becoming the kafirin اللهم اجعلنا من اهل القران الذي اهلك وخاصتك ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين امين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين